Hello, it's Jason Payne for Cold Banker, Dean Harper Realtors. Welcome back to another episode of Pro Tips from a Lender. And what other lender we're going to bring in besides Miss Jen Bailey from Legacy Mutual Mortgage? She's got some amazing information. What are we going to talk about today? Thanks, Jason. So we're going to talk about credit today. This is an important topic that everyone seems to have questions about. So we're just going to kind of cover the basics of what it takes to qualify for a mortgage and how to help your credit score. Outstanding. Yeah, people don't realize just how much their credit scores affects car loans, buying a house. I mean, if you're on the right side of credit, it just opens the world to you. And if you're on the wrong side of credit, you're about to see some numbers. <laughs> Agreed. Yes, 100%. Well, I'm going to do a quick screen share because we'll cover, I have some slides that are really beneficial to covering this topic. So let me know once you can see my screen. I can definitely see it. All right, perfect. So when, when you're talking about credit, you want to understand what all goes into it, right? So some people think it's all just, you know, whether I have a varying type of credit. But no, there's there's actually a lot to it. So this pie chart actually gives you a good idea of how much is attributed to what item, right? So as you can see, payment history, making on-time payments for anything you have on your credit report, auto loans, credit cards, student loans, that type of stuff, mortgage, uh, that, that makes up 35% of what determines your credit score. So that's a really important one. So paying everything on time is very important. The 30% one is the next most important one. That's utilization. Utilization means, let's say you have a $5,000 credit limit on a credit card. Well, if you keep your utilization, meaning your balance compared to your limit on the low end, then it helps a ton with your credit score. So usually you want to keep balances below 30% of your credit limit. So 30% of say $5,000 if your credit limit is $5,000 or 30% of $500 if your credit limit is $500. So Quick point on this utilization piece. If you, I don't know if you uh, have received this, I get this sometimes from my credit card companies. They'll say, congratulations, you're approved for a higher credit limit. And some people will say no to that. Like, oh, don't increase my credit limit, which I agree. If you don't have self-control, don't increase your credit limit. But if you do have self-control and you can have a high credit limit, then always say yes when they want to increase it because the higher your credit limit and the lower your balance, the better it is for your credit score. Okay? I 100% agree. I've, I've mentored a couple of people on that. I'm like, get the maximum. So that percentage of use of your credit card goes down. If yes. you've only got a $5,000 or a $2,000 limit on it, and you're, you've got a five uh, a $2,000 limit, you got $1,000 being used, you got 50% of your credit. That's going to hurt your score. But if you could raise it up to $5,000 or $10,000, that 2000 looks really good. Exactly. I'm glad you're giving that same advice. It's yeah, it's very helpful. So, and if you don't get advertised that from your credit card company, you can request a credit limit increase mm -hmm. and whether they pull your credit or not to do the increase, you can ask them some do and some don't, but if they don't pull your credit and they just need some income info to raise your limit, great, do it. Right. That'll yeah. help. So the next item is the 15. Oh, can I jump in that real is, quick? Yeah, when you talk yeah. about payment history, um, yeah. uh, I, I'm shocked how many people out there don't use auto pay. Um, when you get your bill set up and get get that yeah. squared away, where can auto pay your bill every month. That takes so much right. stress off of you. It's automatically done. And I know some people are, are afraid of trusting technology. Man, this stuff really works. I trust technology more than I do me remembering to write a check every month. Because you're, if you're late on writing that check, dramatically affects your credit versus just set it up auto pay and let it roll. Agreed. Yeah, auto pay removes human error. And we are humans. We have errors by nature, right? So I agree. Auto pay helps a ton. Um, so yes, payment history is important. Utilization, second most important. Third most important, the length of your credit history. So the longer you've had good established credit, the better your score is going to be. And this is where I love counseling parents with their kiddos, like their students. When your kids, even if they're in high school, you can start adding them to your account, either as a joint applicant or an authorized user to help build their credit history. Or you can open a card in their account at, you know, if that's something you want to do, you don't even have to give them the card. You can use it, right? So there are ways to help start that length of credit history early for your children. 
Um, and if you have no credit, I've had students come to me where they just graduated college, they want to buy a house and they have zero credit. I can help them with my credit simulator, get a credit card, talk to them about what type of credit card to get. And typically after three to six months of following my, my instructions, they can have a beautiful credit score in the 700s. So length of credit history is important, but it's not the most. So if you don't have it, don't let it stop you from buying a house because I can still help you build credit even if you're brand new to it, okay? I, now, I never even thought credit. about that before. So that's really new on me. The thought, my daughter's 11 years old now. I'm like, okay, yeah, I need to start thinking about that now so she can have longer credit history. Uh-huh, yes, yes. As soon as you're ready to pull that trigger, it'll start helping build that length. Uh, new credits, the, the next one, which is about takes about 10%. So, um, you know, getting new credit isn't fabulous for the credit score typically, so especially when you're getting a lot of new credit. So you want to kind of limit that. It doesn't take up a huge amount of your credit score. It's only 10%. But if you just applied for an auto loan and a credit card and trying to buy a house, that's going to take a huge hit because that's a lot of new credit. Um, so, and then the last one, credit mix. This one I love because... It's a simple one. Credit mix just means it's really good to have a variety of types of credit on your trade line, meaning have a revolving credit card, have an auto loan, and have a mortgage. That's three different types of credit mixes, right? So that's a beneficial thing too. We find that a lot of our clients who've never bought a house, after they buy a home, within a couple of months of making mortgage payments, their score jumps up. And it's you would think it would go down because now you have this huge mortgage liability, but in fact, it goes up if you're paying the, paying it on time because it's showing not only can you handle a mortgage, but your score is going to improve because now you have a new type of trade line that you've never had before. So it's good to have a variety. Um, so installment loans are one kind of variety, which would be student loans and auto loans. Those are all installments, something you're paying a fixed amount monthly. The other kind is a mortgage. And another kind is a revolving credit card. So um, those are all three different types of credit mixes, which are important. Now, I like to talk about Credit Karma. Do you Have you heard quite a bit of people use Credit Karma, Jason? Uh, yes, and I'm one of them. I do use Credit Karma. I do keep a very close eye on my credit uh, rating because I, I value that very much. Yeah, it's an important thing to keep close track of. Um, I do as well. And Credit Karma is one of my favorites. They have their they have their benefits and their downsides. But what I do like about Credit Karma is it notifies you what, on what's going on with your credit. You can it'll they'll send you emails constantly. Oh, your credit score went up. Oh, it went down. And then you can go log in and see what's affecting it. It shows everything that's on your credit and what the balances are and what the monthly payments are. So it's really really informative. Um, here's the here's the caution I give with Credit Karma. The one thing that it's important for my clients to remember, because every time they come to me, they're like, well, my credit karma is a 650 or my credit score is a 650 according to credit karma. And I say, oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you're using credit karma to keep track of your credit. But here's something to remember. Credit karma is typically 30 to 50 points higher than what your actual mortgage credit score will be. So it's great to track your credit, but it's not a good indication of what the actual score is. Okay. And here's the why behind it. It's not because they're wrong. It's just because there are 25 different types of FICO credit scoring models. And Credit Karma is on one end of the spectrum where they're the least conservative on what your score is. They use the least conservative model. So they make it seem like your score is a lot higher than if an auto loan company pulls your credit. They'll be kind of here in the middle. They'll use kind of a middle version of the uh, of the credit score model. They'll use like not super conservative, not super lenient, kind of in the middle. Same with credit cards. But then if you go get a mortgage, they're on this opposite end of the spectrum where they use the most conservative FICO scoring model. And it makes sense because if you think about why a mortgage company is typically lending out hundreds of thousands of dollars versus an auto loan or a credit card, which is a much smaller amount they're lending. So for that reason, all mortgage companies use the same FICO scoring model, which is the most conservative. So you've got Credit Karma over here, least conservative. Mortgage companies over here, mo most conservative. So it's not that they're, any of them are wrong. It's just they're using a different model that's required for that type of lending. So if someone checks out their score in Credit Karma, I say, okay, whatever you want your score to be when you, when you get a mortgage, add 30 to 50 points to whatever Credit Karma is telling you. 
So if Credit Karma, if you want your score to be a 700 when you buy a house, make sure on Credit Karma, it says 730 to 750. Then you're probably in the safe zone to have it be 700 when a mortgage company pulls. Wow, that is amazing information. Yeah, I did not realize that. So I, I've always looked at there and I'm like, yeah, like I got good credit and I'm proud of it. I joke around <laughs> like I wish uh, you could wear like your credit score as like a necklace around your neck and uh, just judge. OK, I shouldn't say judge people by that. But if I was a single man and wanted to date somebody kind of now that I'm a little bit older, I'm like, I kind of would make sure the mother girl I'm dating got a good credit score. That's funny, Jason. A little bit of a slippery slope to getting a social credit score. <laughs> no, I do not about? want that. That is that's for damn sure. I do not want a social credit score. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> I hear you though. It's really important. My husband and I, that was an important thing to us when we got married. Is what's your credit score? I'm not buying a house with you until it's good. You know, exactly. so it's smart, important. smart people. <laughs> and here's the last slide I wanted to show because it it helps people understand how to establish and improve credit. I can help people establish and improve credit because I have a really great simulator that I pay for that helps me figure out what to do with people's credit. But if you wanna do it on your own, here's some good tips. So apply for one or two secured, not unsecured, secured credit cards with at least a $300 balance per card. And then you can use it to buy regular stuff, grocery, shopping, whatever it is. But then at the end of the month, make sure you're paying it down to at least 30% of the credit limit. 10 to 20% is better, but not everyone can afford to do that. So 30%, I would keep that as the rule of thumb. If your credit card is, you know, it, I don't know what your uh, credit card, you know, limit is going to be, but let's say, for example, you have a $500 credit limit you want to make sure that your balance is $150 a month or less at the end of the month, which is 30% of 500. So just take 30% times your total credit limit. Make sure you keep that balance below that at the end of every month. Um, here's another one. This is the good one with the you know, people who are struggling with bad credit or have a kiddo and they want to uh, build credit. Get your family member that needs credit help added as a joint applicant, not an authorized user. So authorized user can be fine if it's a, a child that you're trying to just start credit when they're really young. But if it's a grown adult, that's not going to be super helpful when you're trying to buy a house. You want them to be added as a joint applicant. So let's say I have a borrower that comes in and their credit score is like a 550. And they say, Jen, I really want to buy a house when my credit score is a 550. And I say, OK, well, let me use my credit simulator. One of the things I will do with my credit simulator is say, hey, do you have a parent that has really good credit score with good credit history, like all those factors on the pie chart we talked about, if they have good factors and a good score, let's talk about seeing if they'll be willing to add you as a joint applicant. If they are, then that can help improve your credit within typically around three months. So, um, but don't do it with a family member that has bad credit. That's the key. <laughs> if, if mom or dad does not have good credit, don't get added because that'll hurt you. Gotcha. And then finally, make payments on time. That is key. And don't miss That's mortgage payments. payments. Yeah, don't miss any payments if you can. Make everything on time. So that high level is a great way to help establish and improve credit as well as understand what goes into the credit score. Um, quick question. I know this affects credit as well. Um, when people are starting off with you, they're trying to get a, a loan, or, or say they're mortgage uh, lender shopping. Um, I tried to explain to them that it's like, yes, when they do a hard pull on your credit, that does affect your credit score. But what is it? Uh, I believe 30 days, you can still shop around. Say if you went to USAA, have them do a uh, credit pull to see how if you qualify. And then you want to call Miss Jen Bailey to compare apples to apples to see what's going to have a better rate. Um, I, tr I try to inform people that that second pool is not going to affect your credit. Um, am I correct on all that? Typically, yes. So as long as it's, so what the three, so there's Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, right? And typically their rule of thumb is if it's 30 days or less and you have multiple credit pools from the same type of lender, just mortgage, not mortgage and credit card, not mortgage and auto loan, just mortgage within 30 days typically you will not see your credit score drop. So that's a good thing. 
I have seen it happen before, but sometimes that's because other they're doing other risky behavior at the same time. So they're running up a credit card and applying for mortgage with a couple of companies. So it's not black and white. It's a little gray, but the rule of thumb is 30 days or less. Now, here's one thing I share with my clients. We are a wholesale lender, which is very unique. What that means is the one credit pool that we do at Legacy allows us to shop a large group of banks and investors with that one credit pool to try to find our clients the best interest rate. So a lot of my clients don't actually go apply with all those other lenders and have all those credit pools because they know that we can shop them. So not all lenders can do that. So that's an important thing I would ask whatever lender you're going to use, ask them, do you shop other banks for me on interest rate? If so, that can save you the time of having multiple credit pools and multiple applications out with other lenders. And if I, um, like I said, there's more than just gin is the reason I like legacy. They also do a really good job of lower rates and present uh, great information to you. Um, one other, one small little more tidbit. Uh, when you get fully qualified, um, and you're getting a house under contract, people sometimes don't realize that two or three days prior to closing, lenders are going to run your credit again, check everything again. So uh, I have to brief my clients, hey, once you get a house under contract and you've got 30 days to close, that is not the time to get a divorce, quit your job, or buy a new car because that can affect your debt to income ratio. And people think they're all good to go because they got that pre-approval letter at the beginning of the process and they have a risk of losing the deal if they start furniture shopping, car, car buying, all that stuff. And I just wanna make sure the public's aware of, don't do anything dramatic that could affect your credit until after you've actually closed on the house. Yes. You know, when I get this question a lot, Jason, it's funny, right around Black Friday, when I have people buying a house in November, they Black Friday comes and they're like, oh, but the furniture is on sale. The fridge is on sale. Can I buy it? And I'm like, don't, don't do it. Or we talk through there, there can be ways to do it if they have a lot of money set aside and they can use their bank account, but don't put it on credit. Don't apply for any new credit during the 30 days that you're under contract on a home. Yes. Do no major change life changes and don't put anything on credit because it can kill the deal. I've, yes. I've seen that happen many, many times. As have I. And uh, not with me because I've briefed my clients in advance not to do that. But I have yep. heard that happen with other agents. So anybody watching out there, please listen to us. We're speaking truth. <laughs> yes. And I will clarify one thing, too. Uh, we, I'm not sure about other lenders, but we do not repull the credit right before closing. It's a little different. So we oh, don't okay. re credit. But what we do is there's this thing called a UDN that we have to activate. So as soon as someone goes under contract at the beginning of the 30 days, we activate this UDN. And what that does is it lets us know if any credit is obtained. All three bureaus are reporting back to us for an entire month while they're under contract saying whether any new credit has been obtained. So we get notified. We do not actually repull credit. And I only wanted to clarify that because some people might be worried, oh man, when I buy a house, I have two credit pulls. But no, with us, we don't. There's only one credit pool, but we do activate this notifier, so to speak, that'll no notify us. So um, uh, other lenders, I'm not sure if they if they repool at the end, they might, but we do not. Gotcha. So you would get notified if all of a sudden they take out a car loan and yeah. then you like have to let them know, it's like, we need to redo these numbers because your debt to income yeah. ratio was kind of close. And right. now you just added a car loan because I got notified about it. Yep, exactly. And yeah, if that shifts their debt to income ratio, guess what? You don't qualify for the loan no more. I know, I know. That's never <laughs> a fun call to make. That's why, just like you, we make sure to warn them. We we make fun, we make jokes and tell them like, don't go buy a jet ski, don't go buy a boat, like don't don't go buy exactly. anything. Let me know if you if there's you know any major changes in your life before anything happens. Let me know. Run it by your lender first. Yes. Day after closing, you're good to buy whatever you're you want. You're good to go. Have as much fun as you want. Yeah. All right. Well, you got anything else for us today? Uh, on credit side, that's it. I'll Those stay. Are the main well, I hope if you've been watching this, you found this information valuable. I'm going to have Miss Jen Bailey's contact information in the description box, as well with mine. If you're looking for a real estate agent, 
Uh, I'll be happy to help you. Uh, I do specialize in like the whole Texas Hill Country area, including like the Search Cibolo area around Randolph Air Force Base, uh, New Braunfels, Boverde, and Bernie. Those are the areas I really specialize in. And Miss Jen Bailey, well, she specializes in all things mortgage related lending in this whole area. So uh, do not hesitate to give her a call. That's going to be her actual phone number. And she does answer her phone when she's available and very helpful to answer your questions. If you just give her a call. Thanks, all right, Jason. No, my pleasure. And I appreciate you coming on again today. And that's going to do it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You haven't done all so already. All right. And also if you know somebody who might want to see this video, be sure to share it with them. All right. Take care for now. Bye. Bye.